everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Doodling Through Education. For my CC students, this is cycle one, week five, science. For everyone else, that just means that we are going to be talking about invertebrates. If you haven't already, make sure you hop on over to doodlingthrougheducation.com, get your workbooks that go along with these videos so that after the video is done, you can fill out the homework pages that go along with it. I also have an option now that you can buy them by quarter if you would like. And again, that's doodlingthrougheducation.com. So without further ado, let's start doodling. Today, we are going to talk about invertebrates. Hmm, so what is an invertebrate? Well, invertebrates are animals without a backbone or any type of bony skeleton. There are many invertebrates in this world and they can be so small that you can only see them with a microscope or they can range up to the size of a giant squid with big eyes. As we talked about in our last video, the majority of animal species on our world are invertebrates. About 97% of all animals are invertebrates. So let's talk about the eight major groups of invertebrates today. Let's jump in. The first group we're going to talk about are sponges. Now, sponges are members of the phylum periphera. All sponges are simple animals, but have many cells. They do not have a mouth, muscles, a heart, or a brain. They also cannot move around. They are what is called sessile. So this means that it will grow in one spot like most plants do, but they are not plants. They are sponges. Their bodies are full of these little pores and channels and it allows water to circulate through them. Most sponges eat bacteria and other microorganisms and a few have been known to eat very small crustaceans. Surprisingly, there are actually almost 10,000 species of sponges, and most of them live in the ocean, with a few living in fresh water. Next, let's talk about stinging cell animals. Stinging cell animals are part of the phylum Cnidaria, and this phylum contains over 10,000 species of animals. They are all found in freshwater or marine environments, but like sponges are mostly found in the ocean. Some examples from the phylum Cnidaria are jellyfish and sea anemones. What makes this phylum special is they have these things called cnidocytes, and these are cells that they use to capture prey. They are essentially stinging cells. There are two types of cnidarians. There are the swimming medusa and the sessile polyps. Now both types of these have mouths and they are typically surrounded by these cnidocytes and these cnidocytes are found on tentacles. Cnidarians eat anything from plankton to even animals that are bigger than themselves. They have no formal brain or even a central nervous system, but they do have areas of tissue that are neural in nature. So they have some form of centralization of a nervous system, but not the formal central nervous system. They do not have any organs that help for them to breathe, and they actually just absorb oxygen from the surrounding water. Next, let's talk about flatworms. Flatworms are pretty simple animals that have soft bodies, and they have about 25,000 known species. They are one of the largest phylums of animals without a body cavity. They can be found many places. They can be found in aquatic environments, both marine and freshwater, and they can even be found in damp terrestrial environments. Over 50% are parasitic, which means that they live off of other organisms. 
They range in size from extremely tiny to several inches long, and they are pointed at both ends. Flatworms also have eye spots on their head. They can range in colors from white to green or brown. Next, let's talk about roundworms. Roundworms can live on their own, but they are most known as parasites as well, which means that they live off of other animals. And in this case, roundworms typically are found in the guts of other animals. There are over 16,000 parasitic species of roundworms. One example of roundworms are heartworms, and so these don't live in the gut, but they can cause a serious disease in dogs because they live in the heart and the blood vessels. These roundworms do not have segments on their bodies, they have, but they do have a mouth at one end and their anus is on the other end. Roundworms have intestines throughout their hollow bodies and they have different layers of muscles as well. They range in size from only being able to be seen under a microscope to being almost 20 feet long. Now let's talk about segmented worms. These are all part of the phylum Annelida. You all have probably seen a segmented worm before because this is where earthworms are found. Annelids mostly can only be found in wet environments and some are even parasitic or mutualistic. Segmented worms can range in size from a few millimeters long to three meters long. All annelids are made of one or more body segments and have one or more rings. These rings are called annuli. Annelid worms are an animal that actually does have a nervous system. Now, let's talk about mollusks. Mollusks are a pretty important phylum of invertebrate animals and almost all of them you find in the ocean. They live in the shallow waters near the shore and are the largest marine phylum. They have 85,000 living species and are considered to be 23% of all the animals that live in the ocean. There are some mollusks who can live in fresh water and on land as well. Mollusks have a great amount of diversity. Some examples of these animals are snails, clams, squid, octopi, and slugs. There are three main things that define a mollusk. They must have a mantle, which is this cavity that is used for breathing and excretion. They also must have a radula. Now a radula is kind of like our tongue, but it is toothed and unlike our tongue, it is actually used for cutting and chewing even before it they swallow it and it goes down into their esophagus. The third thing that all mollusks must have is a nervous system. Now let's talk about sea stars, or we can say starfish. They are part of the phylum Echinodermata. All of these animals live in the ocean on the floor of the ocean. Some can live in deep water and others can live in just shallow water. All sea stars have five or more arms and can be quite small to quite large. Even though we consider starfish invertebrates, they do have a simple type of skeleton. It is not a bony skeleton, so we do not put them in the vertebrate category. Their skeleton are calcium carbonate plates, known as ossicles. Sea stars do have a nervous system, but not a brain. And they don't even have blood, but instead they use water from the ocean to pump things around in their bodies. There are 1,500 different species of sea star, and most are predators. They typically eat mussels or clams and other types of mollusks. 
And last, let's talk about arthropods. Arthropods are a pretty large group of invertebrates and can include animals such as insects, spiders, crabs, and millipedes. Arthropods have feet that are jointed in a segmented body with an exoskeleton, which is a hard structure on the outside of their body. This group has the greatest number of species of any animal group on the world. They have almost 900,000 species because it includes all of the insects and spiders on Earth. Arthropods can be found in the ocean or on land. Within arthropods, there are four main groups, and these are insects, arachnids, crustaceans, and myriapods. And so if you're interested, you can dive further into those different four groups of arthropods this week. And that's all we have for today. Make sure to go through your workbook, complete those four pages of homework off of the information that you learned in this video. And again, if you need a workbook still, you can go to doodlingthrougheducation.com. And on that note, remember to be kind, follow God's will, and take care.